Did you know that almost a million children in this country have lead poisoning? It's a disease that can damage your kid's body and brain, and it could reach into almost every one of our homes. That's because if your home was built before 1978, it probably contains lead paint, and that could mean that your child could be getting poisoning. Very good. Okay, relax. I'm going to listen to your back. Six-year-old Saroche Naim usually spends her Thursdays at the Children's Hospital at Montefiore's Lead Poisoning Clinic. One, two, three. That's it. Her mother says finding out her daughter had severe lead poisoning felt like a personal failure. I was like feeling like as a mother I, I'm a failure because um, my daughter is uh, so much like contaminated. Saroche, like most of the children here, is sick from the lead paint in her home. Lead poisoning can cause severe learning disabilities that can lead to behavioral problems. So far, Saroche is lucky, but two-year-old Damori Goring may always bear the scars of early exposure. Watch him carefully now. Look at him. He does that sometime from the lead. Dr. John Rosen created this clinic to deal with the many facets of lead poisoning. Hi, how are you today? Yeah, fine. Patients here meet with doctors, nurses, a social worker, and an environmentalist. They help create a paper trail to force landlords to fix lead problems. Nothing is done to prevent this disease until the child becomes lead poisoned. That's using children to be censors from a public health standpoint, totally unacceptable. Lead poisoning is thought of as an urban disease, but actually it exists everywhere. People still assume that that it doesn't happen in suburbs. Maureen Havlish's daughter Irene got lead poisoning when she was one year old. Her parents had done work on the house and it had destabilized the old paint. It cost $40,000 to get the home lead free and that doesn't include the cost of worry. She's very high, uh, high strung and I'm not sure if that's personality type or if I will always have in the back of my mind was she um, affected somehow by it because she, one of the side effects can be hyperactivity. It is just another reason that doctors like John Rosen stick with their mission despite the odds. I hope like crazy within my lifetime that finally lead-based paint in U.S. housing is going to disappear and that this disease will be finally eliminated as it should have been many, many decades ago. And joining me now are Dr. John Rosen, whom you just met in the video report, and Dick Stapleton. Now, he is the senior policy advisor at the Environmental Protection Agency, but he's here today in a more personal capacity as a father and the author of the book, Lead is a Silent Hazard, and welcome both of you to the show. Thank you. Um, John, I want to start with you. In the piece that you just saw, paint was the culprit in most of the cases. Is that typically what you see? Our focus in time is about 99 percent on lead-based paint in a child's home. Mm -hmm. That's the overwhelming source of lead in a child's environment and, and it's causes usually, lead poisoning. Usually in homes that were built before 1978? In uh, homes built before 1978 and especially before 1960. Okay. You talk about leaded crystal being a problem too. I know that's a huge shock to a lot of people. <laughs> Why is that the case? Leaded crystal looks great and when you pour your delicious brandy in it, uh, there are all sorts of expectations. Nonetheless, the lead from the crystal will leach directly into the brandy. So look at it, but don't use it. Don't use it. And speaking of not using it, look at these beautiful plates that we have here. Now, these are plates from another country. Could they be a potential problem? They sure can. Yeah. And what I would suggest about plates from, uh, that are imported from abroad is to send them to a lab to be tested, or uh, use a test kit from a hardware store. If the values are consistently positive, look at them, hang them on the wall, but don't use them don't for use eating. Them. And it's leaded paint that is typically the problem in most cases with lead poisoning? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, how can a parent know if their child has lead poisoning? Well, all children one to two years of age should be tested for lead. In addition, housing, as I mentioned earlier, built before 1960 should all be tested for lead, and then ultimately housing built before 1978. And I do want to make a very important point, and that is it is not acceptable 
for children to be used to detect lead in the environment. For this, we have instruments, right, and, and the instruments must be used, not children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of symptoms for, for parents to look for in children that have been poisoned. And I know that, Dick, you have that experience with your own child where there were no symptoms. Tell us about that. Well, we, had, we were absolutely clueless. Uh, we found out a, about the situation totally by accident. Um, ironically, I was producing a radio series on lead. And in producing the series, came to realize that we were at risk because of the age of our house right. and the fact that we were doing renovation in the house. But your child was fine. There were child no particular symptoms. Child but when you tested your child. When we tested the child, we got this awful news that our child had lead poisoning. Unbelievable. And how is he doing now? He's fine. He's doing well now. Absolutely. To reinforce what John says about testing, if you test, you can find out, you can prevent this disease. Mm -hmm. It is entirely preventable. Right. With testing. Now, With testing to find out whether you have it, and right. then preventing it by removing the child from the source of lead. Now, John, there are some specific health problems associated with lead poisoning that we need to, to talk about. What, what are the kinds of things that can happen? The effects of lead can be devastating for an individual child. They are lifelong, they are learning disabilities, there are no cures, and there's no recovery. So the effects on an individual child can be devastating for the rest of that child's entire life. And there are some specific examples, lifestyle issues in terms of the, just being able to think clearly, driving for example. Well, for instance, in younger children, uh, being able to concentrate in school, being able to sit, listen, and understand what the teacher is saying in, saying in school, being able to absorb the information on a blackboard. In older children, or, or as in teenagers, uh, if driving, not being able to understand or interpret road signs. If cooking, not being able to follow the sequence of a recipe. Right. If navigating, trying to navigate in an inner city bus or subway system, not understanding the directions. These are things that I'm sure that most people would never attribute to having been exposed to lead. And when our producer, Justine Simons, started researching this story, she began to wonder if her own child's health might be in danger. So she went on her own search for hidden lead. Here's her video journal. That's my little girl, Eleanor. She spends her day in an apartment built around 1920 because my mother-in-law babysits for her. So I've asked the people from AirTech to come and look for lead in the apartment. This is Leticia Malero, and she is EPA certified to look for lead. This is positive. It's positive. It's positive also. So there is lead in the apartment, and that's a possible problem since some of it is chipping. For the second half of her inspection, Leticia takes swabs of dust from a few areas. Just now those swabs will go to the lab, and I have to wait. Talk to you next week. Well, Justine and Eleanor are here with us right now. And Justine, we've got to know what happened. So the report came back from AirTech's lab that the dust swabs they took actually were negative for lead. Oh, that's great news. I, I think so, but I'm not sure. <laughs> You're not sure. Yeah, so, because there still was so much lead that yeah. we saw in that x-ray Right, test. right, right. So there's still some concerns. Now, Dick, what should um, Eleanor's grandmom do? I mean, you know, this is a potential problem. Well, the situation is that Eleanor shouldn't be there. Yeah. Yeah. But reality is reality, and for many, many parents who find that there's lead in their apartment or in the daycare mm -hmm. setting, they still have to put the child there. They have to stay where they live. Sure. So there are some things that, uh, that you can do, that yeah. you should do. Damp mop, mm -hmm. uh, keep the dust off the floor, wash toys because Eleanor will pick up the toy and put it in her that's mouth. Right, that's right. Wash Eleanor's hands frequently. We saw them wipe a window sill. Um, don't 
get too uh, at ease because they didn't find dust. The window was closed. Mm -hmm. It I was see. winter time. Sure. When that window is open, that window well will be filled with lead dust. Ah, it doesn't see. have to be chips. You right. can't see the dust, but it's there. Well, let me just ask you, uh, John, the fact that um, Justine is a, a young woman of childbearing age, does that mean anything in terms of her presence in a home that's got lead? It certainly does. Both Justine and the baby must be out of Grandma's home until the lead is removed clearance has been obtained and then it's safe to come back. Until that time, absolutely no. Uh, the baby should be tested for obvious reasons and the baby should be out of that environment for obvious reasons. For Justine, a woman of childbearing age, she can pass lead to the baby sure. in utero. Right, and she's also in, breastfeeding in, too. And she's breastfeeding, which means that she can pass lead from milk to right. the baby. Now we have some, some other ways that you can um, figure out how to get the lead out of your home. You know, uh, finding out whether or not your home was built before 1978 is really, really important as you already heard. And you know, if it was, then you really need to have your home tested for lead. If it tests positive, then have the lead removed. And then of course, always have your child's blood tested for lead as well. Now there are some temporary ways to uh, decrease exposure until the lead is removed. Damp mop the floors, as you heard, is very, very important to remove uh, lead dust and paint chips. And this is interesting, don't vacuum. Vacuuming can actually uh, kind of spin dust up in the air and uh, increase your exposure. And then eating foods that are high in iron and calcium can help the body uh, reduce the amount of lead that's absorbed. And let's talk a little bit about the vacuum cleaner because uh, not all vacuum cleaners are, are not good for this. There are some that you can use. Uh, there are some that can be used. It's, uh, a regular vacuum should never be used because the lead dust coming in the nozzle goes out the exhaust in finer, finer particles and will spray the whole apartment okay. with very fine dust particles of lead. But there HEPA. are special vacuums that are available that are called HEPAVACs, which have a very <clears throat> special filter in them which can trap the very small particles that's, of lead-based paint. Well, that's H-E-P-A, H -E -P -A, Exactly. HEPA that's right. And they're more commonly available these days than they used to be, so not mm -hmm. too hard to find. Now, Dick, uh, getting rid of lead in the home can be extremely expensive, thousands and thousands of dollars. How can parents work around that? If they don't own their home, if they're a renter, then who's responsible? It's the landlord. The landlord is responsible. The landlord is responsible, but still, you are the parent, and it's your child, and it's re your responsibility Okay. to do everything that you can within reason. And so what can you do? You know, you've got this big bill looking at you. How do you get around that? Well, if you own a home, uh, the first place to start, uh, particularly an older home, replace the windows. Yeah. This is the biggest single contributor to lead dust in the home. It also has some payback because presumably these are old windows, they leak air and air conditioning and so on. Well, let me just ask you, John, we don't have a lot of time. If you've got a child, that's testing positive for lead. What can you as a physician offer that child? Right, there are some medicines which can remove some lead from a child's body very, very rapidly. Okay. And that's an important tool that we use in clinical, in clinical pediatrics. But again, it's so important to see you so that we can avail ourselves of, of your, your care so that we can do something about this because it's such a Test. terrible disease. Now, for more information on lead poisoning and to find out where to get help, you can visit nolead.home.mindspring.com. And that's Dick Stapleton's website. And you can also call Dr. Rosen's Lead Prevention Program. And that number is 718-920-5016. And if you don't live in their area, they can tell you where to go for help. Thank you all so much for talking about a very, very important topic. And hopefully we'll get more kids tested. I'm Dr. Winnie King. We'll see you next time on Keeping Kids Healthy.